which we have handled, which we have seen with our eyes, rubbed against. This is the word of truth. We have not followed cunningly devised fables. Oh, yes. We were eyewitnesses of this thing. We walk in Bible, but we have seen the Lord. Our eyes have seen the Lord. I don't know about you. When you have become a supernatural Christian, God gets into you and starts walking himself. He no longer leads. He is now Ayakara. Hundred percent true. I saw German written on your forehead, like German. Fifteen October, yes, nineteen eighty-one. Better do it. You don't know me, and you know everything. <laughs> if I be a prophet of God, miracle money now. Declared miracle money. There's fifty-five thousand in his bank account. How much is this? Bob. <laughs> Supernatural weight loss. <laughs> somebody who is sick can just be healed like that yes. this is the good news we preach a good news world with hubert angel provoking a reaction and always worth hearing now i want you to see something i ministered on this subject called the technology of burdens. The technology of burdens. And when I was dealing with the technology of burdens, I realized that so many people have no idea what burdens were. And they still have no idea what burdens are. But there is a deeper level to burdens. And I thought of trying to correct burdens with you here and try to navigate them. But the Lord said, no, give them something deeper because these ones are deeper people. Yeah. You see, a burden can attack you. You know, you know burdens is like you might be moving like this and you open the refrigerator and you see maybe a cake or something you want to eat and all of a sudden you feel guilt conscience rising. It's like, no, I don't have to eat. Or you, re you think you are fasting. Then you remember, no, but I, I, the fasting was 20 weeks ago. Have you ever heard that? Yes. Even after you fast, you can do a week. Yes. And you touch food, you feel guilty. Yes. In your mind, you think it is because you were fasting. But it is a burden of God to make you continue fasting. Yes. <laughs> oh, they didn't get it. They didn't get it. I tell you, they didn't get it. So all of a sudden, you, you find a certain level of guilt. No, no, but, but, but. And sometimes you'll be just sitting down. And all of a sudden, you feel, I need to pray. Then you say, I'll pray to enemy. I'll pray. That's the Lord telling you, something is about to go wrong. Stop it now. You... A lady in Sri Lanka gave one million U.S. dollars towards the building of the church. One million US dollars. And when I asked her, what caused her to give? She said, one day I was sleeping in my room with my husband there and a knock on the bedroom. And they all woke up to answer the knock. Open, there is nobody. They slept and a knock came in. And they knelt down and all of them felt the Spirit of God say, give a million. And they went to bed and they are seeing it in visions. And then a knock happened again. Like now. A physical knock. That was a burden. It had gotten physical where something is now pushing you to get to that place. But let me tell you something. Burdens can be silenced. Burdens have no time scale. They can keep banging and keep banging and keep banging the door, but there's, they have no time scale. But there is something deeper. Mm. I want to show you something. Isaiah 46, verse number 10. Let me get it, verse number 11. If you can, you can use the NIV. I use it very rarely. 
from the east. One, two, three, let's go. From the east, I summon. <laughs> so there is a technology of burdens, but there is a technology of summons. Summons of the spirit. When you can't do anything, when it comes to summons, you cannot deny anymore. It is not a knock. It is not a feeling. It is a command. I know you're not getting it. But what happened with us is our ears which are spiritual have been silenced to the summons of God. So nobody is hearing summons anymore. All we are hearing is some inclination to burdens. But we can't go deeper to summons. Let me prove to you. Genesis chapter number 4. Verse number 15. And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain. You see, see, let me tell you something. Have you noticed that in America, when my team was coming to me, saying, you, you have written that uh, church service, church service, New York branch, New York branch. And last week, we had the numbers still there. Nothing has gone down. Notice, most people were asking in the DMs and the letters and the text, is it for free? So notice, we are not used to charging services. So now our posters have to say free. I'm from Africa. The spiritual is free. So since the spiritual is free, we don't understand this thing where People are asking, is it free? So we say, free, 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 free. No need for registration. <laughs> so the reason why we require a prophecy inside of a prophet is because we are silent inside. If you had a prophet, you wouldn't need a prophecy. But if you were mature in the spirit and you responded to summons of the spirit, God will be speaking to your spirit. You don't need the prophet to say it. You're not hearing me. So I'm teaching you to hear God by. The Bible says in here, when a king will see a died, I saw the Lord. There are things that need to die for you to see the Lord. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Do you realize that if you come to Spirit Embassy, what we are training you is to hear God for yourself? But do you realize if I got money from you seeing me and prophesying to you, that means I'm actually undercutting my own money by teaching you to hear God. Uh, it will be counterproductive. <laughs> And the Lord said unto him, Therefore, whosoever slayeth Cain, whosoever kills Cain, what shall happen to them? Vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark upon Cain, lest any finding him. Mm. Are you flowing? Here we go. And Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. Are you getting this? This is brilliant. You understand. And Cain knew his wife. And she conceived and bare Enoch. And he builded a city. One, two, three. And called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. You know, whenever you go out of the presence of God, you dedicate what is supposed to be God's to someone else. 18. And Andrew Enoch was born Irad, and Irad beget Mahujahel, and Mahujahel beget Methusahel, and Methusahel beget Lamech. You know, uh, the great preacher called uh, Yonge Cho, the pastor of the largest church on earth, one time was given a Bible to read. He was not a Christian. So when he started reading, he read from there, and Anok was, Enoch was born Irad, and Irad beget Mahujahel, and Mahujahel beget Methuselah, and he put the Bible down. The guy came and said, have you read the Bible? He said, no, it's a book about begetting each other. <laughs> so know exactly what to tell people who read the Bible. Tell them to start from the book of Romans. Because Jesus might come before they are born again. <laughs> While they are reading begets, 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 begets. Let's go. Verse number 19. 
want you to see something. And Lamech took unto him two wives. The name of the one was Ada, and the name of the other was Zillah. Let's go. And Ada bare Jabal. He was the father of such that dwell in tents, and of such that have cattle. Mm. And his brother's name was Jubal. Say Jubal. Jubal. He was the father of all such hand of the harp and organ. That's it. Do you understand this scripture? Are you here? If you notice, it tells us that all the instruments, these guys who play guitars, all these instruments came from the devil. I need to do it here. Because I, my, my spiritual wavelength was not catching well there. Here. <laughs> Notice it was only Cain who sinned before God. And from Cain, the progeny of Cain produced musical instruments. That means the plan of God was never for musical instruments. It is a demonic invention. Oh, now I got a problem now. I need to be here in the center here because some people are missing. <laughs> this is the reason why the devil himself had instruments within him. That's the creation of everyone. Every one of us here are, is built with instruments within him. That's why the Bible says everything that is in you, praise the Lord. Not every instrument outside. So music was never meant to be something outside. But when God realized the interaction between humanity and divinity had faced a default, a point where it was now failure, a failure, what God did was to create something out of nothing. This is the reason why prophets, when you learn from them, they will tell you music is a river of prophecy. It is not. We say it is a river, but it is not. Music is simply there because the prophet has lost alignment with God. So he needs music. When I start prophesying, don't play. You will see I prophesy. I prophesy whether music is there or not. But some prophets can't. They have to sing a song. Ah. Why? Because the mind and the spirit have now gone away from the Lord. So music is trying to drown outside influence so that the prophet can line up with God. So Jubal knew exactly what was happening. That his family had lost touch with God. The spirit was no longer responding to God. There was no music coming out of him. <sighs> Why do you think music is this popular? Why do you think musicians are making noise? <laughs> the first one to have what was called the Mimshak anointing was David. But before David, it was the devil. And the Mimshak anointing means the anointing to spread. That Michael Jackson would sing in America. And the next minute, the song is in Chabalala, South Africa. Yet the South African musician has not been heard. Yet the South African preacher has not been heard. But the musician is even affecting people in church. So our spirits are facing a deep corruption from the enemy, that God is no longer mu hearing music when we pray. What he's hearing are words, but no music is playing to him. Do you understand? Do you understand that it is the devil who had the music? I'm still talking of someone's right now. It is the devil who had the music. Am I talking to somebody? It is the devil who had the music. But if you look at it from the time he fell to this minute, you have never heard him play music. Do you realize that the devil is not the strongest enemy ever? No. Bad guys were arrested by God. The Bible says they were in chains 
in Baghdad, River Euphrates, bound. God realized these ones are bad boys. I'm not going to release them. The only the devil can be released, but not these demons. They were too big to be released on you. And listen, the devil is a cherub, meaning to say it's a second class angel. It's seraphim, then cherub. Yeah, how can a second class angel with no power to override the seraph have this much power? His influence was musical. He still had the ability to communicate when humanity lost the communication. So the only thing the devil managed to do was since you lost the communication, I'll create my own outside to influence you. So that if the music in the world catches you, you can never be caught by the music from heaven. <laughs> you understand? And I'm glad we have white people here, Indians, Asians, uh, Mexicans, Spanish here. We have all of you. But I want to tell you something. Black people are people of rhythm. Even the way we move. Sing one note we are in. If you sing a song that we tune in fast. If you say let's dance here. While this Ricky will go like this. We are going to be in. You understand what I'm talking about? That means there is something in us that is born with rhythm. Where did we get this rhythm? Human beings are people of sound. God is a person of sound. is an entity of sound. That the moment God wanted to create something, he says, and God said, sound. Look at what the Bible says. It says, if they do not cry out in worship to me, even the stones will produce music and praise. Every creation of God is loaded with music to respond to him. Only humanity lost it. This is why the reason, listen, God does not lack anything. It is only one thing he lacks. He says he seeketh them. He seeketh them that worship him. In what? With instruments. No, in spirit. And in truth. That means our musical instruments are in our spirit. But only a few of us are remain tuned to this. When you play the guitar, there is something that is called key. You can be in tune. Ah, you can use the right keys. I don't know if you're getting this now. You can use the right keys. Do you understand? Ah, and, and if, you, if you deal with the, with the keyboard, there are things called octaves. You understand? It can go, even when you deal with, uh, with knots, they are accidental knots. They didn't get it. That seem like they're out of tune, but they are in tune to whatever is happening. I'm talking to myself. Uh. <laughs> Notice, this is the reason why the devil likes it. Because everything with the devil is in tune. It has to be on key has to beat the right octaves. I don't know if you're getting this now. Uh, it has to be a combination of real notes and accidental notes for it to come out as real sound. But according to God, it is not what he likes. God is simply interested in your spirit's discord. He created you with your own discord. And he hears best sound when you are in discord. That's why we have five people who can sing in church and the whole congregation is torn deaf. How can you worship God if you can't sing right? Because God doesn't care about tune or tone. Uh, God hears the music that you are singing with your spirit. <laughs> That's why I don't believe in worship leaders. What are you leading? Are you leading the worship or you're leading the church? <laughs> Do 
Because when they start singing there, you can even see, I'm not saying these ones, these ones are well trained and well in the spirit. But when they start singing, you can tell the whole attention they wanted for themselves. Following exactly their father, the devil. This is why every singer here in America that is beautiful, singing for God, no, they're singing for the devil. And they tell you their testimony. I used to be a choir member. And they say this while he's on drugs. Because they were never worship leaders. They were worshiping somebody who is not God. So the problem you have is you do not know how to link up with the spirit. To go deeper in the things of the spirit and say, I need now to awaken what is inside. Do you understand that when you awaken what is inside, you don't need anybody to prophesy to you. Yes, and anyone who comes to prophesy to you is only confirming what you were told. Yes, right, right. Listen, prophecy is not wish hunting. Right. This is the reason why people are losing Jesus. <laughs> Our spirits are corrupt. They are no longer hearing the summons of God. Do you realize there are people like us? Speaking out, got invited by um, a prophet of God one way back called T.B. Joshua. Bishop Gallington was there. Over 500 churches he, is, he oversees. Okay? Bishop Gallington. And he stood in the middle there. And T.B. Joshua went behind a speaker outside. And he said, Bishop, Stand still. And T.B. Joshua would move like this. Bishop Gallington would be pushed. How was Gallington there? T.B. Joshua and Gallington. They don't mix. But Gallington was pushed. By a force he never saw. And you dare say it was the devil. You make a mock out of God. How was God in, in Gallington pushed? Say, <laughs> I don't know. I was in Punjab in India at a church called Miracle Saints Wonders Church. I was there. As I stood there like this, I raised my finger and I said, For all the Muslims who are here, stand up, queue up. And Muslims queue up, queued up. I said, Now you tell your Allah to hide information from me. It's on video. It's not some talk. <laughs> ah. I said, are you not business people? They said, we are business people. I said, now, tell Allah to hide information. But let's make a deal as a business deal. The moment I know your house, I know what is happening in it. And I speak by Jesus, whom you call a prophet when he's God who created your prophet. I said, I'm not talking about, you know, Muslims, don't play that. They, they will kill you. I said, we're not talking about killing each other here. We are simply dealing with facts today. Facts. Tell Allah to hide your information. I went from one to the other. Prophesying. Telling them what was in the bedroom. What was in their drawers. All their drawers. This one, the drawer. The, this one. What drops. I said, is it true? They were like, how do you know this? I said, no, don't worry about how do I know this. Let's shake our hands. You lost. I won. Receive my Jesus. <laughs> what causes that boldness? Sit down. Huh. How does it work? How are these people able to do it? Oh, yeah, they're poor. Bishop Oyedepo is given this whole land. He said, no, buy this land where he has built this church now. They said, in this place here, nobody will come in here. It's our land and witches and wizards were in this claiming it to be their own. And Bishop Oyedepo said, do not worry. Whosoever I bought the land, all you witches and wizards, if you try... If you just come in here, you try to enter this land, you become mad. 
by the following day, three people were already mentally disturbed. They defied the order of a man. He came in and walked in like this. And said, anyone who tries to challenge me here will become mentally disturbed. The witches and wizards said, no, let's send our strongest guys. Singing, dancing, entered. The way they entered is not the way they came out. <laughs> what causes men to be this powerful? There are differences in what you call a burden. You can feel a burden. You can sense it right now. The reason why you came here, you felt a burden that I might actually get help from this person. It's a burden. That means God was speaking to you. But when it becomes a sermon, when it becomes a sermon, a sermon is not what you think. A sermon is a spiritual legal thing, contract, that you have no chance to argue. I know you were not hearing me. Isaiah 46, 11. Isaiah 46, 11. Let's quickly do this. He says, From the east, I summon a bed of prey. From a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. What I have said, that mm, I will bring about. What I have planned, that I will do. Notice, notice. He says, I will summon a man. Notice, not what he wants, I will do. I'm no longer inviting him. <laughs> there are now legal summons that would push him from there to where I want. Even though he doesn't want, he keeps on following. Even though he doesn't want, he keeps... Sit down. This is why my spiritual father said, do you know what is a calling? I said, I don't know, say. You see, the calling, a calling, a calling is when you feel a pool. You feel a pool, brother, you feel a pool. You don't know why you are going, but you feel a pool. <laughs> you don't know why you are here, but you felt a pool, brother. It's not a burden. This is now a summon. Notice, notice, God, verse number 12, and you'll see something very powerful. Listen to me, you stubborn hearted. You who are now far from my righteousness. What will I do? These ones have special privileges. I will bring my righteousness near. It is not far away. And my salvation will not be delayed. Huh? Says when I have a summon on someone, I, I carry the salvation to them. They don't look for it. I carry my righteousness to them. They don't look for it. I decree and declare. There are people here who are no longer dealing with invitations. You are now having a summon. How to hear the voice of God by Hubert Angel. Learn the secrets to hearing directly from God from this latest edition. Available to order now from the Good News Store app. Order your copy now from the Amazon Kindle or www.hubertangel.org. Supernatural power of the believer. Discover the secrets to growing in the five dimensions of God's power. Order your copy of this best-selling book with over 100,000 copies sold by Hubert Angel from the Amazon Kindle Store or visit our online shop at www.hubertangel.org. Thank you, our partners and friends, for making it possible to bring this message to you. Those wishing to partner with Hubert Angel, please visit www.hubertangel.org.
Paul, he called himself an apostle of Christ. The second stage he went to, he was dealing with burdens. I'm an apostle. I feel I'm an apostle. He was dealing with burdens. Then he moves to the servant of God. Then he ends with a prisoner of Christ. Now, it's no longer a calling. Now for him, he's a prisoner now. What he wants to do, he can't do. Ah, it's all of a sudden, all the things he wants to do. Listen to me. I started at the University of Salford Finance. First degree, second degree, University of Salford. Best student award. Masters in entrepreneurship. Now PhD. Now, now watch this now. I did it at the University of Edinburgh, my masters. Listen, all was finance. I had a pull towards there. But every morning I wake up, there is something about the pulpit. There is something about souls of people. There is something about the prophetic. Even if I sleep, prophetic is sleeping. When I wake up, prophetic is waking. When I eat, I eat prophetic. When I think, I think prophetic. Why? It's a salmon, brother. It's a salmon. <laughs> Have you felt a salmon lately? Or simply yours is a burden. You can delay a burden. You can even refuse a burden. And a burden can go for years. I, I felt for years I should do it. I felt for years I should do it. Some of you have had burdens to help your parents, burdens to help your mother until she died. And you felt, oh my God, I should have done it. I should have done it. I could do it. I could have done it, but I, I was just stubborn. That was the burden. When it's a salmon, you will find yourself at that mama's door. No matter what she did to you, even if she threw you out, you can knock like this with all the groceries and the shopping and the clothes, that Prada, that Gucci, everything. You don't know why you love that woman. You don't know why. That's when God summons you. Most of you are missing summons. All you are getting are impulses and you know, signals. Something that you don't even know why you are getting it. But when it becomes stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger, even the people you hate, you start loving. You know this person messed me up last year. But here you are on the phone. How are you? Uh, do you? Can I do anything for you? You put the phone down. You go like, why am I calling this woman? There is a salmon on your life. And it's now time to admit there is a salmon. And walk towards the signals of that salmon. Let me show you something. Go to the book of Acts 20 verse number 21. Acts 20 verse number 21. I want to show you something. Acts 20 verse number 21. Testifying both of the Jews and also of the Greeks. Repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now and now and now, behold, I go bound in the spirit. Paul says, I'm no longer called now. I go bound. In other words, if I had other options, I would go somewhere else. But it seems as if I don't have any option. I have to go away. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. They will say, why did you join spirit embassy in New York? We say, uh -huh. I'm bound in the spirit. I know I... If you had given me another church, I would have gone there. But, 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 but this one is no longer a choice. It is because... Uh, say, I feel a push. I feel a push. I can't let go. I feel a push. <laughs> Notice what he says. He says, not knowing... The things that shall befall me there. Ah. He says, I'm, I'm, I'm only going. I, I, I don't know what will happen to me, but I'm going. <laughs> if you came to the embassy and you feel a push because you want a car, you are wrong. It's a burden. It's not a, it's not a salmon. A salmon has no benefits inside. You just feel there is a connection between me and this man. 
there is a connection between me and the prophet to this dispensation. There is a connection. I don't know why, but I'm pushed. I'm pushed. I'm pushed. I'm pushed. I don't know why. I go bound in the spirit. I said I got bound in the spirit. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense that you have joined a new church. There are mega churches right there. You went past them like this. Where are you going? I'm going to Spirit Embers. How many people are there? Oh, we started on 400. But the church you left was on 4,000. The church you went past was on 5,000. But he said, I, I, I know, I, I'm, I'm just going there. <laughs> Why? I am bound in the spirit, brother. I'm bound. I'm bound in the spirit. There is something that is pushing me. Ah! Hey! Why do you feel a push? Even in marriage, it can be the same. They will look at your boyfriend, at your husband, and go like, what were you seeing? <laughs> ah! Have you seen people who are married, look at them and just go like, huh? What happened? Because some marry because of the body. Some marry because of beauty. But some will marry because there is a commandment, a summon. Because marriage should always be and only should be because of one thing. Okay. You can stay there. It should be done for ministry only. Because they come in shapes and sizes. And lips and legs. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but you get to a point where you go like, I'm married for an assignment. Yeah. When you marry for an assignment, you are marrying because there is a someone. Yeah. This is why I tell ladies and gentlemen, when I do my marriage uh, seminars called why did I get married? And I do youth meetings for dating, which is called one night stand. When you wake up, I'll be gone. When I counsel people, I tell them, only marry for one reason. Date for one reason, ministry. If you date for anything else, they come in shapes and sizes. <laughs> So never let your men understand that it is because you have body, you have this, your kiss is the best. Because there are some people that are very good more than you. But only one person can understand ministry. If you are lucky even in your group in ministry, you can have five people that really understand ministry, your ministry. But the whole world has got legs, hands, faces, eyes. <laughs> Let me tell you something. It is a salmon that has made generals out of men. How do I get there? Salmons are only gotten there when you utilize the technology of tongues. Because the Bible says, he that speaketh in an own tongue edifies himself. The word edify there is ekodomio uh, hitau. It means you rise like an edifice. Have you ever played that thing called frisbee? In, where you push a thing like this. And it goes, that's what the Bible is talking about. You speak in tongues, you rise. You keep rising. You keep rising until you knock on the cause of God. You knock on the dimension of God that calls people, that summons people. The people I move with know when I speak, two minutes, I'll be speaking, three minutes. If they laugh, I laugh in tongues. <laughs> this is the truth. 
I find myself laughing in tongues. I can just be walking like this. We'll be talking about something else. Even cars, houses, I'll be like, ha, ha, ha. we might buy that thing. Yeah. Consistently, I'm in the mode of tongues. I speak a different language. I push a different language. I understand a different language. I speak the language of God. I rise like an edifice. Huh. Sit down. Charles C. Caps of this same soil you are in began to speak in tongues in a whole street, a town, New England, with a paper bag in his hand. You took soil. He said, I call you into my family. Next building. I call you into my family. One year he owned the whole street. <laughs> Are you getting me? Yeah. I went with him to, to a place. It's called Station Road. We own the whole electricity station for one town. You get to this 100 meters going that direction. The whole street. This is a whole electric station. Power station for a town. Now, how did we get there? They were selling only a part of the land and buildings. They were selling only a part and they took it to, to the auction. Nobody bought it. We had it. We went there. And the person said, ah, I'm not buying because it was so expensive because they are selling that small part because they are in a power station so they can't sell off it, all of it. Mm. We said, let's go. Spoke to God. No, see, see, God is not somebody you need to speak to about asking for money. Yes. No. Yes. You click the dimension. Yes. So we spoke in his language. Rapalus kapaya. Verugus kaya. Perunama you know. Listen. We were marking areas that were not on the auction. Then they said the following week is the auction time. Guess what? The people it had gone through auction so many times. People were not going because it was so small. When we went there, I said to them, raise your hands. I said, keep raising. Another lady raised her hand in competing with us. And I said, raise again. And the lady put her hands down. Because she's thinking, it's that small land. When we finished, we also think it's a small land. When we got there, they told us it's the whole thing. <laughs> Listen, you rise like an edifice. Now it was a salmon to buy a land. Sit down. How can a man say, I go to Jerusalem bound in the spirit? I go to Jerusalem bound in the spirit, and it's so dangerous. It's so dangerous to fight a man that is summons over his life. The problem, you are like this. I told you of Stephen. How Stephen is, is being stoned. But inside him, the fire of the Holy Ghost is burning. That the Bible says, and they looked at his face. It was burning as if it was the face of an angel. <sighs> Yet the man was a waiter. He wasn't a general preaching anything. And the Bible says, and he performed miracles. Yes. Stephen would give you a plate full of food and you get healed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How can God say, choose men? Huh? <laughs> choose men who are full of the Holy Ghost to be waiters. Now we're in church, we just go, uh, who wants to join the department for care department? Now, the Bible says, choose men who have the Holy Ghost. So yes, those who want to be in the finance department with no Holy Ghost. Those who want to be in ushering, no Holy Ghost. <laughs> we 
with no jobs. We put them there. Say, ah, man of God. So jobs are necessary. According to Paul, he says, if a person has no job, mark them. He says, and don't be friends with them. In, the, in your Bible. Ah, this church is difficult. So, no job, no friends. According to the Bible. It says, but do not alienate them. Love them, but mark them. <laughs> Brother, some of us, we had no option to be here. My mother, just about five foot tall, but mountains big and small, crumbled when she prayed. You are all a result of the prayer of my mother. You. Sit down. She had eight children. When she got to her seventh child, she had two pregnancies that failed. And the doctor was advising that she stops. And she was a nurse dealing with a fertility so you can stop. You can... She was the one responsible. And she was told by the doctor, my father was called, cautioned, let it be the last time you do it. And my brother is called Lee for short for limit, meaning say that's the end. I'm not having any more kids and I wasn't even born at that time. So they had that child and closed every avenue of having kids. On the eighth child and I'm the ninth. So medically my mother could not give birth and she knelt down. She said if all the eight children I've given birth to, none of them is a prophet. Break every protocol, every medical protocol and bring one. Now you think you are here, you are here because of something. You are here because you were summoned to hear me. So, even if I didn't want to preach, my faith was sealed by her prayer. So mine is preaching out of a sermon. I'm not preaching because I like to do it. Ah. <laughs> Jeremiah 20 verse number 7. Because you're not getting it. I want to show you something. Jeremiah 20 verse number 7. Oh Lord, you have deceived me. Uh -uh. <laughs> the prophet got to a point where he said, God, you are a deceiver. Oh Lord, thou deceived me and I was deceived because you are stronger than me. That means if the Lord was not stronger than Jeremiah, he would have refused. Now we can tell Jeremiah is being forced. Now, where does Jeremiah's story start? <laughs> thou art stronger than I and you have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. Huh. Mm. For since I speak, I cry out. What does he cry out? Let's read. I cry violence and spoil. Have you not noticed that when I say this thing is going to happen in this place, uh, people will be going on the comments and go like, why is it always bad? Why is it always bad? And then when I say miracle money, why is it always good? If you listen to people, you'll never go anywhere. Thank God. Raise your hand and say, thank God. I'm delivered from approval addiction. Say, I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> because the word of the Lord was made a reproach unto me in a derision daily. Let's go. Then I said, I will not make mention of him. He even had the choice. He said, I'm not mentioning nothing about you. Nor speak anymore in his name. But his word was in my heart. It's a burning fire. Shut up in my bones. Ah. I wanted to stop. But there was a sermon. This is no longer a burden. It's a sermon. Have you noticed that there are things that you, should, you just do? 
I don't know if you're getting this now. I don't know if you're getting this now. I've seen old people that are in love. 78 there. He say, Mama is 72. Papa is 74. And the kids, maybe five, are not yet married. They stay at home. She would tell you at 50, 40, when she was 40, she would say, I, if it wasn't for kids, I would have left this woman, this man. Then the kids left. <laughs> Nobody goes to ask, why are we still here? Then she starts inventing stories that if the grandchildren come, they need to find me here. Oh, they can find you wherever you are. It's because you have a calling. It's a push. It's a summon to be in that marriage. It's a summon. <laughs> Woo! I wish you were hearing me, but you're not getting me. Then it says, I was weary with forbearing. Let's go. And I could not stay. In other words, he's saying, the things that I had in my spirit, when I said I'm not doing, I'm not speaking anymore. Ah, it pressurized me so much that I burst at the seams and I began to speak it. I wanted to stop, but I couldn't stop. I don't know if you're hearing me at all. So when you're looking, what you're looking at right now is a man summoned. Is a man summoned. When you talk about spirit embassy, two people called that they can't let go. When prophetess B.B. Angel was young, what happened was she was in the house and the parents were with her. And a voice came. They all heard it calling her. Less than the age of seven, a voice what, what, what will I do? It's a voice calling. How is a voice calling? <laughs> you think this is a joke. It's not a play. It's not a play. I was taken by the spirit of the Lord and the Lord stood there and said, how far do you want to come? I said, where? To go away. I said, look at these people here. I saw Maria Woodward Ether. Catherine Kuhlman. Do you understand this? Smith Wigglesworth. Kenneth E. Hagen. William Marion Branham. They were sitting around discussing stories of what happened before. And God said, whose anointing do you want here? I went closer to investigate. I said, all of them combined. Just imagine you come out of that vision. I'm not telling you what happened, what God said later. You come out of that vision, it's like, who, what, how was I asking these things? There are people here, maybe three or four of you, that have actually received a visitation from God and they asked you what you wanted and you said the wrong thing. Wow. See, one time, the Lord came, I was not grown in word. And the Lord came to me and said, son, what do you want? Anything you want, I will do it. <laughs> I said, God, I wanted money at that time. <laughs> ah, you can hide your stories, I tell mine. I really was broke more than the Ten Commandments when Moses broke them. And I said, God, I want your love that you have put in me to be on everyone. I want everyone who sees me, if I have to interact with them to greet them, they have to say, sure, he loves people. The Lord said, okay. He never said much. All right. And left. When I came out of that vision, I said, no, I need money. This is a true story. <laughs> Even now, if he comes here, I'll mention something else. But my point was, why, why was I saying nonsense like this? <laughs> love, love everyone. What is this? I can do this with money. It's better. 
You see, what was in me cried out for what God wanted. It was a salmon. But as for me, mm -mm. <laughs> if I start asking you here what you want God to do for you, ah, have you noticed, even when I'm prophesying to someone, say, what do you want God to do for you? So, mm -hmm. All of a sudden, why? Because your spirit is looking for a salmon. So your spirit wants what God wants. But you are trying to search in your spirit for it to give you what your flesh wants. So your flesh is demanding what the flesh wants. But the spirit wants you to demand what the spirit wants. All of you here from that to corner there, some people don't have visas. They don't, they don't stay in this country legally. And all you want is just a visa. And in the, in the time you're asking, God has got another plan. Imagine one time I prayed. There is a car called a Rover in Britain there. Some ugly car. My friend had it. I used to have friends. Oh, now I don't do friends. I don't, I, don't have, I don't have need for them. I'm seeing this guy every morning I come out. There, I see him driving this nice car. Say, hey, God, if you love me. <laughs> if you really, really love me, this one. It didn't happen for months. Then I saw the smaller version of it. I said, God, God okay. Maybe that one is big. Let's do this one. It did not come. I thought, and God said, minister to him. I said, if I minister to this guy, he would know I actually need you more than him. Wow. You understand? Yes, yes. You understand going to Bill Gates and telling him about Jesus, that you need Jesus. He will tell you, I uh, think I have more of him than you. <laughs> By the look of things. But when I got to a certain level, when the things began to look up, that even on my way to the gym with prophetess, we would wait somewhere, stop, and I would take 220,000 pounds and buy a new Lamborghini in cash. And she has no idea. She's just going to the gym. I looked at what she was wearing. It was red. I looked for a red Lamborghini. I said, there it is. In the days I was praying for a rover, God knew, I summoned you. There is something you are going to buy that is bigger than this. But my eyes were not seeing it because my flesh was too much in the way. There was no music coming out of me to realize my time is coming. My time is coming. My time is here. I'm about to finish. Let me tell you something. The miracle you have been bothering God for has left the hands of God. I know you are not. You think it's a declaration. I know you. These things differ in the way they are delivered to you based on who is delivering them. As you're sitting there and as you're standing there, I know you have got that request you have. If you, God, you just do this one. God says, the miracle you have been waiting for has left my hands. Signed, sealed, delivered. It is yours. Have you noticed something called a biographer? You know biographies? Do you understand that if the biographer is the person who is writing the biography, is actually there with you, he will include his own story in there. Read the book of Matthew. Read Mark. Read John. They don't put their names. John is an additional one. Where somebody put, even theologians agree, is that how can Matthew act like he wasn't there? And Jesus said to his disciples, huh? If you were there, you say yes. And Jesus said to us, Oh, you're not getting what I'm trying to say. You're not getting what I'm trying to say. That means that when you read the Gospels, 
you are reading the story of God. It is God who wrote it through the apostles. So they were, they were held in, kept in. They couldn't write anything else except what God wanted. Brother, the Gospels are real. <laughs> Here is one verse that will mess you up. He said, and Jesus. No. Here, let me leave that part. Moses. Moses was the most humble man on earth. Do you know who wrote it? Moses. <laughs> if you are humble, how are you writing it? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you're hearing this. It is only if God was holding the man's hand and saying, write the most humble. And Moses even shook like, eh? There is a salmon, brother. There is a salmon, brother. Now, now, the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth, written by a very meek guy. <laughs> Nicodemus said, Master, we know that no man does what you do unless they are called from above, unless they are getting it from heaven. That's, you see, see, son, I said to you, eh, I know no man does these miracles unless they are called of God. Do you know the miracles you do in your church? Say yes. I see, did you hear him? He said, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jesus said, I tell you the truth, unless you are born, ah, ah. Why are you not responding to my praise? Because he's a summoned spirit. He will not respond to men's praises. Because his answers are taken a hold of by the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is the one answering. He's not answering himself. So when the Holy Ghost is answering, you answer in a certain dimension that people are not expecting you to answer. I tell you, that uh, unless a man is born of... Ah, wait! I'm praising you now! Just say you are welcome. You are welcome, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's, 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 praise the Lord. Jesus did not do it. He knew men's praises are not what he responds to. His spirit, which is the summoning spirit. Listen to me. When a spirit wants you in his dimension, it invites you there. Ask. Ask. And it shall be given. So there is a level of asking. When you are done asking, you are given. You start searching for deeper. But then you will get to a certain level where you only wait for a spirit to invite you. That's why the Bible says, knock and you shall open. No! The spirit that is inside will open for you and invite you. Brother, the level you want to get to, I'm here to open the door for you. Your family will be transformed. Your nation will be transformed. New York will be transformed. We are not waiting, brother. We are not waiting, brother. We are not waiting, brother. How to hear the voice of God by Hubert Angel. Learn the secrets to hearing directly from God from this latest edition. Available to order now from the Good News Store app. Order your copy now from the Amazon Kindle or www.huberthangel.org. Genetics of Words, an Amazon bestseller by Hubert Angel. Learn how to recreate your world through the supernatural power behind your words. Get your copy of this riveting book that will transform your language. Available now at www.hubertangel.org or get a digital copy on Amazon Kindle.
Isaiah chapter number 20, verse number 1. I want you to see people who are youth in. People who have summons. I'm telling you. I don't know why. You know, when, I, when I'm in UK, I travel three hours to go to the branch in London to preach. Three hours. I'm a youth in. I've got branches that are one hour away. And anywhere I go, it will be big. Trust me. New York won't even fit. In the year that Tatan came unto Ashdod, I like the names. When Sargon, the king of Assyria, sent him and fought against Ashdod and took it, what happened? One, two, three. And the same time spake the Lord by Isaiah, son of Amos, saying, Go remove your clothes, be naked. And put off even your shoe from your foot. And he did so, walking naked. Ooh. I know. If God comes to you right now and say, do this, you will swear it's Satan. You say, in the name of God, I know it's a Satan. <laughs> Even God, if he provides his social security number to prove it, you say, nah, you faked it. <laughs> Do you see the things we think we know God does? The things we are well aware. We say, no, 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 no. God will not do this. God will not do that. God will never ask me to do this. God will not. Have you ever heard people saying, I'll do anything for God as long as it is in the word. That means they're not doing it. They are finding a loophole. Where do you find it in the word? This Naked. You know, God, <laughs> God is no longer giving people like you these things. It's only people who are summoned that God keeps giving instructions that are difficult. Some of you are never summoned because he knows it's a waste of time. You will refuse. <laughs> and the Lord said, like as my servant Isaiah has walked naked and barefoot three years for a sign and a wonder upon Egypt and upon Ethiopia. Let's go. One, two, three. Let's go. Uh -huh. So, mm -hmm. let's go. Shall king of Assyria lead away prisoners and the Ethiopians captives, young and old, naked and barefoot. Let's go loud. Even with their... Uh, uh, uh. Are you... You, you managed to read that word. You need to be born again. You, you need to be born again. <laughs> how, how, why, why is it my issue that you want to show the Egyptians? So I need to be naked for. Why can't you just go to them and tell them? Why can't you just go and say, hey, guys, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be naked when you run. He says, no, Isaiah, do it for me. What about Hosea, the prophet Hosea that you like to quote? He was told twice to go and marry a prostitute. Imagine a man is planning for marriage. I'll find a girl and marry her. And God said, yes, Hosea, your plans are going. I have a plan for you. Say, yes, say, what do we do? Go to the beer halls in the streets, red light district. Marry a prostitute. Hosea is like, what? <laughs> the guy went, married the prostitute. The prostitute went and stayed with Hosea and cheated on him. And started again prostituting and left him. And God said, now, go back. <laughs> ah! Take unto thee a wife who is a prostitute. And children of wardrooms. No, notice, it doesn't say you, these are going to be your children. <laughs> you marry a prostitute and then she prostitutes and get children. He said, they are your children. Let's go and hear the names, beautiful names. 
committed for what? For Israel has committed great work. So what is it to me? Go to Israel. <laughs> when you receive summons, it's different, brother. The instructions you believe in and the things you take and the things you do are way off. If you call a person and say, this is what God has um, said I should do there, <laughs> you need deliverance. <laughs> Let's go. So he went and took Goma, the daughter of Deblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. Mm, let's go. And the Lord said unto him, call his name Jezreel for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to seize the kingdom. Listen, of the house of Israel. But notice, you will see that if you read the meanings of the words, one of the children was called, not my people. Imagine calling your guys, come here, come. not my people, come. <laughs> what do that do? <laughs> How? Because when you are young in you, you have taken the bait. God has grabbed you by the hands and he wants you for himself. A summon is a spiritual legal contract that you have no say in. That your mortal body cannot refuse. You find yourself going there. Agabus came and said, Paul, the owner of this belt shall be arrested. It was a warning from Agabus. But Paul says, I'm going. Knowing what the prophecy was saying, you will be arrested. Now, if you receive a prophecy, you'll be like, eh, thank you for warning. I'm not going. Paul said, I'm going. X 15. 25. It seemed good unto us being assembled with one accord to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul. Look at this now. 26. Men that have asserted their lives. This went beyond summons. They were called. Then after they were called and chosen, they sought for a deeper on their own. This is what we call the deeper life. So, so when you are summoned, you are good. But when you go deeper now, you are causing yourself beyond, going beyond your summons. <laughs> That's what we call deeper life. It wasn't, it's not a byword. It's not a hashtag. Because some of you live for hashtags. What kind of life is this? Yes, today, you know my poster is called 100 likes. Ah, oh, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, men of God. Men of God are staying on Instagram to see how many likes. We have 367, now over 380, I believe. The last time was 367 branches with the registered members of over 2.8 million members. So if you live today, we still have 2.8 million. So likes and, and comments don't matter. As long as we push people right now, you can search in the whole world. I tell you the truth, which is true. You will never find a man who have sons that are popular as much as me. Yeah. Never. I'm talking about spiritual sons that have made impact around the world. Never. You will not find. No matter what you want to do, you will not find a man on this earth who has prophetic sons that are known? You not. I made an impact. I managed to put something in people. I invested in people. It's not a thing I did. It's a sermon I had. Saruman is over. Sit down. How many people talk? I can give you names in any continent and you will know I, I know that name. Yes. And I'll tell you, that's my son. Yes. With evidence to prove it. I can tell you men of God that are prophesying today who are not even my sons, but they couldn't prophesy without me. With evidence for it. 
See, when it is a testimony, you think it's showing off. <laughs> but my testimony is are just extravagant. Yeah. Ezekiel chapter number four. One, two, three, let's go. Thou also son of man, take thee a tire, lay it before thee and portray upon the city, even Jerusalem. Mm. And lay siege against it and build a fort against it and cast a mound against it. Set the camp also against it and set the battering rams against it round about. It's a simple he's being told. Do this. Let me show you. Let's go. Moreover, take thou unto thee an iron pan. Set it for a wall of iron between thee and the city and set thy face against it. Just sleeping. God wants to demonstrate what he will do to a city. He uses a man called a prophet. In one location. He is taught to lie in one location. Okay. People were soul winning. And I asked them, after you came from there, uh, did anybody refuse to stop? They said, yes, some were refusing. I said, okay. And what did you do after soul winning? I said, we just left. I said, are you going again? I said, to do soul winning. I said, no. To do what Christ said, do. They said, no, they don't understand what I'm saying. Christ said, when they refuse, go into the streets later on. Kiss them. Uh -uh. Uh, do, you, do you even read the scriptures? Remove dust from your feet. See, we just go there. Yes, sorry, winning. And guess what happened when they were soul winning? I looked at the pictures. I said, you did not soul win. They went into the streets. Some of them with the, what's the name? Look at them, who they are targeting. <laughs> Do you notice what they've done? They've gone to the riffraffs of society. Oh, now I just made you mad. <laughs> the Bible never commands us to go to the poor when we preach. Never. Mm -hmm. yeah. I give you the scripture so that you don't get angry. Normally it's the poor who are angry right now. Smile so that you don't fit in the... The Bible says it this way. The kingdom of God is like a man who has a party and he goes and calls the rich. One with a farm. One who owns the merchandise. And when they refused, he then goes to the streets and called the ones who were not called. The Bible did not say the kingdom of the devil. It says the kingdom of God starts with the rich. When the rich refuse, we go to the poor. I knew you were not going to like it. This is why the church is not growing at the level it should grow. Because we start with the poor and hope they will grow to become rich. But if we start with the rich, we have enough money to reach the poor. Ah. Am I talking to you or you have gone home? So I can look at it and go like, mm, where were you? What area were you winning souls in? Because they were winning people who were lower than them. Because they felt it is easy to convince them. So they were not winning by the spirit. They were winning by their appearance. So you know I am like this. So I look for somebody who is struggling, the homeless. And when the homeless come in, they want a house. Now the money we should buy buildings for the Lord is now being used to take care for one guy. And that person is not changing because they want to change. They have no other option. Because they need rent. So they will tell you they love Christ a lot. Because they need rent every month. So you have not won a soul. They know they need money. It's the same thing I keep telling people, that the poor people cannot be humble. 
What other option do they have? <laughs> See, they didn't. They, they missed the whole thing. This whole road missed the whole thing. <laughs> you are already on the ground. Where, where else can you go? So if a poor person comes and kneels down, it doesn't mean they are humble. If they don't, you don't give them help. But then a rich man stands and says, I like your Christ. That means there's something in them that has recognized that with all the money I have, I still need God. Are we supposed to preach to the poor? Yes. But what is our ticket when we start? Go to the ones with the money. So we can take the money and give it to the poor. But if we bring the poor, we are all poor. We can't help the poor anymore because we are poor. Prophetess Bibi and I, during this meeting, this, this COVID in Zimbabwe, we donated 3 million US dollars. Now, it happened because we have it. <laughs> I can hear you cry. You should have given me just relax, <laughs> sit down. This is the problem. You were one where they were winning people yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Let me tell you something. God is about to push you to higher dimensions. Between thee and the city. And say thy face again and said, And it shall be besieged and thou shalt lay siege. Let's go. Again, this shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Mm. Lie thy also upon thy left side. And lay the iniquity of the house of Israel upon it. According to the number of the days that thou shalt be lie upon thy Shall bear their iniquity. Let's see the numbers. Mm -hmm. And I have laid upon thee the years of their iniquity according to the number of the days. 390 days. Do you understand that the men were supposed to lie on one side for 390 days? Outside the city gate. Where are you going? To sleep. Where? Outside. For how many days? 390. Because God wants to do something. Can't God do it without you? Let's look at, um, and when thou hast accomplished, okay, lie again on the right side. Do you understand? House of Judah, 40 days. Hmm? Let's go. Therefore thou shalt set thy face toward the siege of Jerusalem, and thy arm shall be uncovered. Let's go, let's go. And prophesy again. And say, I want to show you something. Take also unto thee wheat, <laughs> and barley, and beans, and lentils, and millet, and fishes, and put them in the one vessel, and make thee bread thereof, according to the number of the days thou shalt lie upon thy side, 390 days. Mm -hmm. Let's go. And thy meat which thou shalt eat shall be by weight, 20 shekels a day. <laughs> Even food can be controlled when you are summoned. Aye. Okay, we are going back to this scripture. I just want to go to Isaiah 7, verse number 14. I've said it over and over again for some. We're going back there. Isaiah 7, 14. Please listen to this. Watch this. Therefore, one, two, three. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give thee a sign. Behold, a virgin shall give thee. What is his diet? Jesus. Butter and honey shall ye eat. That he may know how to refuse evil and choose good. See, some of your lack of discernment is bad diet. Anyway, forget about that. I'm not. But notice here, it says butter and honey. It is already chosen. John ate what? Locust and honey. What did he wear? Sackcloth. Because God had already taken him in. Let's go back to our scripture that I said we're going back to. I pray for somebody here. That your knowing of Christ should not be just by talk. <laughs> Are you hearing me? That it shall be something special. That it is an instruction from God to follow him. It is no longer a play of words.
Are you here? Come. Something the Spirit of the Lord will do. You say it in that. She's correct. I heard it. Even me, I heard it. Did you hear it? <laughs> the Lord is going to do something great over your life. This man is actually called to have his own ministry. When I started ministering, when I started preaching there, I felt a summon. He received a summon from the Lord. Tell him to respond in your language, whatever that is. I receive it. Ah, you, you can receive that. Receive it. I receive it. Hallelujah. I receive it the same in every language. Ah, she broke shatera brata shita. So it does. The Lord sent him a summon. We want to hear you. Amen. So he sent him a summon. So el Señor te mandó una demanda. And the summon was one thing. Y esta demanda es una cosa. Look at the man of God called Uber Angel. Mira al hombre del Señor. And every day. Y cada día. When you kneel on your knees. Cuando te arrodilles. Pray for him. Ora Amen. por el hombre de Dios. Amen. I receive it. I receive it. Yes. Yes. What, what does that? Oh my. I don't sleep. I pray for this day. Shaleka Bayonama prophesy. I want you to see the mystery of prophecy. That the men's prayers are answered here. So, what do you think a prophet is? Prophesy, Major. When you pray, and yet I have the answer to your prayer, who do you think a prophet is? Major. Ah. Receive it. Receive it. So, the Lord ministered to me. What you were looking for was my mantle. Amen. Yes, it's true. Hallelujah. And the Lord ministered to me. The Lord ministered to me. That even the wife. Shall be given a mantle. That prophetically. She will even hear even things from the Lord. Ella va a escuchar del Señor. That even when they have a ministry and people are listening to them. Que ahora aun cuando tenga el ministerio y la gente lo esté escuchando a ustedes. She will even write songs ella, in the spirit. Ella va a escribir canciones en el espíritu. Amen. It's true. Yes. Where, where is the wife? Baro Talengesunam. There is a link between you and him. It is not so much physical, it is spiritual. You. I'm his it's like a daughter, I'm but it is spiritual. Huh? I'm a spiritual daughter. Your spiritual daughter, Baloka <laughs> Namanfe. The Lord ministered to me. The Lord ministered to me that you should never leave this woman here. There is a connection that cannot go. And in a few years to come, when money begins to rain, I receive it. I speak to somebody here. Hallelujah! I receive it. Never forget this woman here. And this is it. I saw a dance being curated. A dance. It was the Lord was dancing because when I spoke about a lady that danced, the Lord ministered to me. But this was a dance in the spirit. And because she dances for me in the spirit, I will be able to do mighty wonders even more. What's this? What's this? Even more than the king wanted to do for Salom. So there is a similarity. What's your name? What's your name? Solemni. Yeah! Ra! Ra! In the realm of the spirit, something is coming over your life. Something is coming over your life. And I saw, and I saw, 
as it were in this woman's hands eggs were being put Huevos. in her hands and I saw three eggs being put in her hands and the Lord ministered to me something he said I will give you more spiritual children than she has ever had that her voice will not be an echo but a voice it shall be a direct voice and the enemy shall quake when she speaks I'm speaking now I said I'm talking now can I prophesy? Prophesy. Prophet. Rabalos que la mando say. Prophet, mention three eggs in your prophecy Barosa. right now. How many? Rabos. Three children. Dalixo on Balegana. See, they are not hearing me at all when I talk. I saw three eggs. Yes, sir. <laughs> and she has three children. I'm speaking to somebody under the influence of my voice. There is power that is happening right now in your life. Changes are coming on your life. And brother, do not worry. I'll come here. And something will happen. That when you leave this location, you will be a force. Amen. That people will look at you and wonder what has happened to you. Amen. I receive it. Brother, I want to cancel death in your life. You. Come, come. I want to cancel death so that people have no premature death in their lives. Amen. Amen. Because there are aborted missions in your life. Yes, sir. Aborted missions. Yes, prophet. You know when people say, it almost happened. Yes, this is the man. Wow. It almost happened. Yes, prophet. Where no, everything he wants almost is about ex- it. Before he... Exactly, prophet. <laughs> Even being here, it wasn't supposed to be so. Difficult. You know. That's, that's, my, that's my brother. That's my, that's my brother. It is like an almost happening thing. That's true. Man of God. Very true. Nothing. You can sit here. A nicest man. Very nice. But things just go the wrong Robert, direction. Out of God, that is so true. Everything goes wrong every time he touches something. Right. <laughs> you are very correct, prophet. Help me. And listen to me. This is like your father. It's like anything he touched, nothing happened. Yes, prophet. And this is his hope. Like things will move for my family. These boys will move. These boys will move. Exactly. Even another, that I see true, another man in Europe. That He's holding true. a Bible. That is true, man of God. He's an apostle. He's an apostle. My, bro- my, my, my older brother is in Europe. Ah. My older brother is in Europe. No way. <laughs> no way. No way, it's in no way. No way. He's a preacher. And I see this man. He's holding a Bible. As he held the Bible like this, he's trying everything. It's not working. Even his church is over, not growing. Over, over 10 years, no, no, no growth. I, I don't know this man. I don't know the other man. But this man is now number two in the family. Why? Number one is, number two died. Yes. Yes. This man was number three. Yeah. And he stepped and filled in a gap. Exactly. But the Lord is ministering to me. You will be number one. No, they Amen. didn't get it. You're not getting it. Amen. I spoke physicality. Now I'm talking spiritually. Because upon his life, there is an apostolic ministry. That is true, man of God. That is true. There. Before coming to this country, I was told that I have a calling. Now, hear this. But you see, when you came to this country, the Lord is ministering to me. Don't forget Yawonde. Don't forget Douala. Those are, my, those are my, my cities from Cameroon. You are from Cameroon? Yes. And these are the cities in yes. Cameroon? Yes. In the realm of the spirit, I speak to somebody who is under the influence of my voice. My voice is ringing in your life. You are going to make a change. Amen. You are making a mark that can never be erased. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You've been trying to make things work. 
Now all you need is a break. Yes. That's what you're looking for now. And you said, I will look for this man and I'll find him. All you need is help. Yes. yes. This, I will do an overhaul of your life by the Spirit. Uh, yes. Today yes. is your change day. Yes, yes, help me, man of God. I'm coming here. Who told you about me? Come, who told you about me? I've been who told following you? you for a number of years. You've been following me? Wow. On YouTube. Have you ever met me? No, sir. No. But you came oh. in my dream years ago. Oh, okay. Now just imagine that you have never met me. Right. Only Evangelist YouTube. And Evangelist Facebook. Your case is urgent, brother. Your case is very urgent. Yes, urgent. I understand. Your, your, your yes. case is very urgent. So in the realm of the spirit, I began to see a shift happening over your life. Yes, yes. Don't worry about what the enemy has said. Yes. Oh. Yes, come on. Tell me. Tell me, man. I'm telling you now. You have never met me. I've never met yes, you physically. Yes. This is the first time. Yes. Do you believe I'm a prophet of God? Yes, absolutely. Okay, now. Now, even if you didn't believe, I wouldn't care. But I would prove to you that I am. Yes, come on. Prophesy. Right now, I saw police are trying to come to your house. Right now? Ah, leave me sin. Oh, my. Oh. Hear this. The plan was this woman. Yes. Is lying to your child. Yes, tell me, man of God. This a small little baby. Yes. He's been told nonsense. Yes. Now this baby is claiming you touched it. This is, this is true. It's true. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you something. And I, this moment I have to take, talk to my daughters. Yes, God help me. You will not receive a text from me. Amen. You will not receive a WhatsApp message from me. So if you see a WhatsApp message saying it's me, it's not me. Just block it. Now, don't say, ah, but I thought. You're thinking wrong. Immediately just say, no. Hear this now. Don't play victim. And as America is very libelous, if somebody is angry with you, they will claim nonsense. Because they know how to play the rules and the rule regulations. This is why if I ever meet anyone anywhere, it's recorded. And listen, don't even, it's not a play. We record. The moment you enter my room, you're already recorded. Because we know how people think. Imagine this woman used to be his wife. Somebody that she thought I would spend the rest of my life with takes a child Jesus. and then lies to a child. Jesus. Very little. You start hammering on a child to respect you more than the father. Seven, eight, nine. You're still doing it. Ha! Huh? She yes, she's, nine. she's nine years old. She's nine years old. Yes. Let me tell you as a prophet, and let me tell this church as a prophet, and let me tell the world as a prophet, you never touch that lady, that girl. Yes. You never. Yes. Now, now they are saying, she's even, even her, she's even saying it happened. So he's just saying to me, and whispering to me that the, the girl just changed from nowhere, and now she's accusing him of saying you did it. No, she's, she's saying, man of God, that I, uh, she doesn't want to come to my house, and she's saying that I tried to see her or something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, I tell you now. Don't confront nobody. Because all this is a plan to fight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been in ministry for too long. Yes, sir. I know how men act. Men act differently. They do stupid things. Women do also stupid things. We are all humans. They do crazy. But they are character traits that some people possess more than others. Men present a certain character trait that can be worse. Women present a character trait that will be worse. Women, if they don't have your attention, right. they will find a way to fight you so that you 
just give them attention. So this woman already is looking for a battle. Yes. But this is a revenge. It's not attention she's looking for. Revenge. For whatever nonsense. Now they don't even stay together now. No, you don't. No. Someone is there. Someone is there. And someone is... Carol, 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 what? Carolina. Carolina. Yes. How do you lie about your own man, whether it's ex or whatever it is? If you see, I always tell couples, you know, they when they come to me and they say, "Man of God, man of God, my husband doesn't like me, doesn't love me anymore, and I want to go." I always say, "Why are you angry if you don't love him?" Sir, this gentleman is telling me now the divorce seven years ago, and the. Her. You divorced her seven years ago. And it's a revenge now. <laughs> and God uh, why should it not just, if you want it to end, don't make it a better. Yes. But the reality is, when somebody still like you, they will fight you. When they are done with you, they ignore you. If you see someone claiming, a man claiming to you that you used him, he still loves you. If a woman says you used her, she still loves you. It's just not possible for them to tell you, look, I just want you back. That's all I need here. Let me tell you something. We are here to cancel. Yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That you be restored back to your child. Yes. That no enemy will be yes. able to destroy you. I receive. To touch you. Yes, hallelujah. Jesus. I receive. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know whether it was P or P, 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 P. I decree and declare now. Yes. Basura. Peyton. Peyton. Huh? Peyton. Peyton. Who is that? The daughter's name. Okay, good. La sucarreta y no greta zavai. Do not worry. Yes. And money is coming to you. Yes, yes, I receive. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Money is coming to you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. When you were born, the angels wrote about seven stars on your forehead. Yes. And the enemy removed until you left with one. Oh. But the Lord ministered to me that he impressed even upon your flesh. This is why, how I saw this. I saw, come, I saw even a man writing in ink on your skin. That's how. Money will come to you. Your star will rise. Yes. Yes. Ah. I have a tattoo of money and a star. Ah. Yeah, there, 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 there. The star. Uh, there is the star. There is the star. You can see. Yeah. And then the money is on this side. <laughs> <laughs> Just a dollar sign. Dollar sign. Yeah, dollar sign. Yes, there sir. is the dollar There's sign. There is the dollar sign, sir. There it is. Just the dollar sign. Can you see? Mika 
la conducía. Satu saka. Selunda shikai. Yes. A good news world with Hubert Angel, provoking a reaction and always worth hearing.